Now on Chronicle. It's a big Saturday in the South. From action on the field to the excitement in the stands. But I believe we have the greatest fans in the nation. When that crowd roars, it's one of the loudest, if not the loudest stadium in the country. And a party in the parking lot. Woo! Look around. You're surrounded by happy people that just love this stuff. It's about the collegiality. It's about community. It's about family and friends. Saturdays are for football. It's tradition. We're all diehard Gamecock fans. And I talk trash every day. From the Saturdays in the South, Southern style. Now, Chronicle, Saturdays in the South. Welcome to Chronicle, I'm Jane Rovolo. Here it is, Saturdays in the South. The time of year that we just get to revel in college football. It's all about the pageantry and the traditions that Southerners hold really dear every single fall. And as you can see at Clemson University, they are all in on the orange for sure. But honestly, no matter what your college colors are, it's really for everybody about family and friends, about these wonderful tailgate feasts and the fanfare. Go, Go Tigers! Tigers. Go. Yes. And sports director Mark Whiteman kicks us off with the November rivalry that tears the Palmetto State in two. Whether you're cheering to Tiger Rag or waving your rally towel to Sandstorm, this is the biggest rivalry in the state. Go Everybody's going to live with this. Like, it's personal. I tell people all the time, and it's the truth, this is the most heated, intense rivalry that I've ever been a part of because it's year-round. If you're not from around here, it can be hard to grasp. It means everything. You have to win. But in the Palmetto State, you're in kindergarten, and you've decided who you pull for. This rivalry reigns supreme. Most people in South Carolina are either one or the other. From that first contest in 1896 to the 120th last November, these fierce rivals have left it all on the football field, dividing friends and family, often in the same house. We had been a Clemson family for 27 years, so when she <laughs> finally picked, when she picked USC, it was like we had to just change all our stuff. My boys, they'll always be best friends, but you know, today they put their brotherly love aside. I'm the only one in my class that went to Clemson, and I talk trash every day. So if we don't, if we don't win, it's gonna be bad for me. Split allegiances and split sweaters. I made it. I took uh, one of my son's shirts and the other son's, I cut it in half and sewed it together. Go Tigers! Orange, purple, garnet, and black. Go Tigers! Blended together at long last on that last Saturday in November. You know, here in South Carolina, and there's no pro sports, and it's a small state, a very prideful state, and, and uh, it's a very, you know, intense rivalry. You can feel it in the fairgrounds and in the buildup. From Cocky's funeral to the Tiger Burn, nothing lights a fire quite like the Palmetto Bowl. Something Alabama native Dabo Sweeney realized shortly after he was hired at Clemson as an assistant. And I get back in coaching, I get hired at Clemson, I'm like, let's go. I can't wait to go recruit in the spring. No different than when I was at Alabama. 50-50, maybe. I, you know, walk in a school, some people be like, so happy to see you, you know. And then you'd go walk in another school and they're like, oh, it's the Clemson guy, you know? And they don't even know me, you know? They're just already against me because I walk in with that logo on. You shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but the chapters in this story are endless. Goodbye to Big Thursday by Frank Howard, Jerry Butler and the catch. Five straight from Steve Spurrier. That'll do it. Make it five and every streak's alive. And the ensuing answer, seven in a row under Dabo Sweeney, tying the longest streak in the more than a century old affair. It's intense, it's just, it's intense. Like it means a lot to so many people in this state. So for three some odd hours, once a year, nearly everyone across the Palmetto State puts down what they're doing and fixes their gaze on the gridiron for the best rivalry, bar none, 
regardless of who you root for. This is just such a great state and that we will come together no matter what. And that it's just more like a pride for the whole state. The only constant in college football right now is change as the playoff expands again and conferences realign with no regard to geography. And while Clemson Carolina remains untouched, the SEC waved goodbye to some well-established annual rivalries. In fact, this is the first time since 1992 that South Carolina won't face Georgia. The Bulldogs open their season with a convincing 34-3 win over Clemson at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. Georgia again the preseason favorite to hoist a national title after going back to back in 2021 and 2022 and finishing 13 and one a year ago. But expectations are nothing new between the hedges for head coach Kirby Smart and his Bulldogs. We're dealing with new challenges this year. We don't have a chip on our shoulder in terms of people trying to use that as motivation. I've never used um, a failure from the previous year as motivation, and I've never used the success of a previous year as motivation. We won't do that this year. That's not who we are. Um, we want to recreate ourselves um, to say uh, in the best light we can. And this team has been fun to coach. I enjoy being on the grass with this group. They're fun to be with, uh, have a great locker room. They love each other and they're working their butt off right now. The dogs will contend in a growing SEC that includes Georgia's first trip to Austin, Texas since 1958. But while the road ahead for Georgia is both captivating and daunting, the road is all new for one upstate school. Here's Chase Justice in Anderson. South Carolina is a state built on tradition and old rivalries. Dating back to 1889, kind of old, when the Furman Paladins and Wofford Terriers played the state's very first intercollegiate football game. But here in Anderson, the Trojans are embarking on a new football journey for the state's largest private institution, kicking off the year in 2024. An exciting time for this university. And go Trojans! The fans. Football is really big in the state of South Carolina but I did hear that we have over 6,000 people at this game today, which for a smaller school, like you said, is huge. They only have 4,000 students. And the people that helped make this football dream become a reality. Anderson had become the largest private university in South Carolina, and there was just a sense among a lot of people, including myself, that it was time for a football team. If we're going to be the largest university in South Carolina, we need a football team. And while Anderson University is kicking off a new era to get the 2024 football season started, just down the road in Greenville, the Furman Paladins are coming off an outright SoCon championship, their 15th Southern Conference championship in program history. Head coach Clay Hendricks, the two-time SoCon coach of the year, is back for his eighth season leading the Paladins, hoping to build off one of the most successful seasons in recent memory. That saw Furman advance all the way to the FCS playoff quarterfinals for the first time since 2005. I think we got a chance to be good defensively again. Uh, you know, I think everybody's been these seniors a year ago. We, we have a bunch of older guys. Uh, have a good mix of older, younger, some talented guys. Uh, I've just been really pleased with this group. And it's a long season filled with plenty of highs and lows. But one matchup that area fans have circled every football season is the Deep South's oldest football rivalry between the Furman Paladins and Wofford Terriers. Now on Wofford's side, they return head coach Sean Watson back for his second full season at the helm for a team that started the year 0-9 before winning back-to-back -back games to close out the 2024 campaign, including a big win over their rival, the Furman Paladins. With all the adversity we went through last year, you know, it really proved that, you know, this team really believes in each other, believe in us, we believe in them. So there's a belief factor that's going real strong. And, uh, you know, we, you know, basically now it's a, the process of making us better. You know, we have to build on what we've done or it means nothing. And the Terriers were able to start their 2024 campaign off with a huge season opening win over Gardner Webb. But one thing is for certain, Saturdays in the South aren't just for the Clemson Tigers and South Carolina Gamecocks. It is a Southern tradition built for universities of all shapes and sizes. In Anderson, I'm Chase Justice.